Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building, friend to the room. That's right. Family, Shanti Das. Welcome. You, you know hey. Shanti comes once a year because National Silence to Shame Day. Yes, That's right. this is year six, y'all. You year weren't six. here last year. but I wasn't here, no. I was on the yeah. road. Yep. You was, you was trying to uh, uh, YouTube us this time, too. You were trying to FaceTime. <laughs> you said we want you in person, so we we glad that you were able to make yes, it. Yes. For people that don't know, that live under a rock, what is National Silence to Shame Day? So National Silence to Shame Day is a day for our organization, but it's also a day just to really normalize the conversation on social media. We want to mm. get people talking more about mental health and spreading the message. Also, it's a day that we raise funds for our programs because we are still that little engine that could, mm -hmm. uh, a grassroots organization for mental health, but I think we're making a national and global impact. And how are you? Let's like, start, start there. How Thank are you? Thank you for asking that. Mm -hmm. So you know what? I am the best I have been hey. since wow. my suicidal ideation. Wow. I have been in therapy consistently now mm -hmm. for about a year and a half. I have a really dope African-American sister um, back home. And she has really helped me navigate my grief and my loss. But I just wake up every single morning. It's so much negativity that's still happening in the world, natural mm -hmm. disasters, you know, the mass shootings and so much else that's going on. But I really wake up and choose joy in the morning. So that's not to say I don't have bad days, mm -hmm. but I am happier than I've ever been. I'm even ready to start dating again. I haven't been wow. on a date really? in eight years. Wow. Eight years. Wow. And that was when I would, you know, almost took my own life and then my sister's death and then caring for my mother. And then when she died and then just this work is heavy work. Mm -hmm. But I'm finally focusing on Shanti now. I'm glad you talk about grief a lot because I think grief is something that uh, none of us navigate well. Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, not, not just in the black community, but just, you know, in society at large, we see so much death. And like the only remedy is just to keep it moving. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's healthy at all. I don't think it is either. And just last week, five of my friends all lost parents mm -hmm. in one week. And so, <clears throat> excuse me, I was trying to be there for them and just sending them positive affirmations and messages each day. And I went to a couple of the funerals, helped a couple of them plan some things out. But what I tell them is you got to lean into it. You know, when, when the person first passes away, of course, it's a lot to be done and you're getting inundated with calls and messages and flowers and stuff. But it's like those months afterwards, right? When the grief creeps back in and certain things remind you of your loved one. Lean into it. It's okay. And, and, and especially for men, you know, a lot of times men don't want to cry about it. But I say, you know, cry if you need to. Get it mm -hmm. out. It's really therapeutic. Mm. What, what else has helped you with grief? I mean, after you, it's just feeling what you feel enough? No, traveling has helped me a lot, too. Okay. Sometimes I need to just get out of the space, you know, that I'm used to being in with that loved one. And mm -hmm. so travel is like a, a new love language for wellness mm -hmm. for me is what I like to call it. Um, and, and also sometimes, you know, just reminiscing with family. Uh, I think families oftentimes when people pass away, they want to try to move on from it and act like almost like it didn't happen and only celebrate on those milestone days like birthdays. But no, talk about your loved ones, share mm -hmm. pictures, you know, create mm -hmm. vision boards of what that life was like and what you want life to look like. Right. It'll help you grieve through that process. And then also seeing a grief counselor. You know, we talk a lot about mm -hmm. therapy. Grief counselors help a lot. There are a lot of great organizations. Um you know, that are out there. Um, but just, you know, do things that remind you of your loved ones. Like I take walks mm -hmm. and I try to, you know, when I'll see a red cardinal or butterflies, like I don't know that my loved one's spirit is there, but it gives me something to hold on right. to and mm -hmm. that faith. And like, I swear every time I'm feeling a, some kind of way, a red cardinal will like fly across, you know, either the car or in my direction. And I'm like, okay, mom, or okay, sis, like I hear you. Everything's mm -hmm. going to be okay. So it's all from a spiritual perspective, too. For me, I just try to find ways um, that connects me to their spirit. When you talk about wanting to date now, did you purposely not want to date because you knew you had a lot going on with yourself and you didn't want to bring that to somebody? Yeah, I, I wasn't in the right mental headspace for mm -hmm. that. Um, I needed to get Shanti together. Mm. And, you know, I don't know if I'll get asked out in a couple months and now. I'm still living for me, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not just looking mm -hmm. for somebody you know, to save me, but it would be nice to have that companion. Have people know? been trying to holler the last couple of years? A little bit, but not really. I, I'm te a terrible dater too, though. I, I don't know how to flirt. I don't, I don't know. How to, <laughs> I'm the best networker you ever want on your team, but mm. dating, I'm really bad. <laughs> right. So, so is this, this event, is this what people can come out 
to it or is it more of like just an initiative and movement silence? So this time we're not doing anything live. Okay. It's just an initiative online. Mm-hmm. But we did just, I want to mention, come off the heels of May 1st with uh, it being Black Children's Mental Health Day. Mm-hmm. We had a senator in Georgia, Senator Anderson, that wrote a resolution for us designating May 1st as Black Children's Mental Health Day. Mm-hmm. First state to do it. And so we want to be able to take this to all the other states. And so we had a really dope uh, teen wellness clinic. Uh, we call it our COPE clinic. And we had about 100 students from Atlanta Public School Systems. And so we had like a sound bath session for them. We had this one cool thing called Lyrics Prescribe, where we kind of talk through lyrics and relate it to everyday life. Dope. We also did a live podcast with a couple of teens. And then we had some expression stations. Um different things that, you know, from a sensory perspective that the students could do. So we're really trying to do that on a national level. So I'm hoping that we can partner with the Mental Wealth Alliance and do some Absolutely. really cool stuff for that. I'm down, 100%. Yeah, so um, it's just a lot of good stuff that's going on right now. But I do also want to mention that the CDC released a new report in the last couple of months stating that black suicide rates mm-hmm. have increased almost 37% from wow. 2018 to 2021. So one of the things that we're doing at Silence to Shame is focusing heavily on black youth and black men. So we have a suicide prevention summit coming up on September 30th, which maybe, you know, if we can, if your schedule is clear, we'd love for you to come down and do that. But we have to really so pour. September 30th? Mm-hmm. Okay. We have to pour more into our black youth. Um, in the last couple of weeks, I've had friends that told me that their friends, you know, had a child that has attempted. And so I think coming out of this pandemic, our black youth are really hurting mm-hmm. and it's a lot going on. And so we have to be able to provide them with healthier ways to cope. So yeah, for, for a parent that's listening right now, what do you suggest to them if they feel like their children are going through something or it's difficult talk for the child to them? And I know sometimes it's hard to talk to your kids because they have that cell phone and they feel more comfortable talking to their peers. So I get that. But as a parent, I'd rather talk and say something and have them mad at me later than have my child attempt and not be here. That's mm-hmm. right. um, the other thing, too, is when they talk to you, you actually got to listen, parents. Um, sometimes things can go over our head or we're trying to, like, fix them instead of just really sitting there letting them get it out. And then, of course, you know, family therapy is also a good option. But please listen to your kids. I feel like kids nowadays are more prone to get help in regards to their mental health. They are to a certain degree, but more and more that we do a lot of events with the teens, there's some of them are still afraid to open up and sh- and mm-hmm. share. And I think fear is still a factor there. That's why even with, you know, a lot of celebrities and athletes and different people opening up and helping to normalize the conversation, that's why we need more funding to do these type of events because you don't know what you don't know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I think if there's still a certain level of fear there, once they learn about mental health and learn that, Everything doesn't have to be so severe. It doesn't mean that you're going to take your own life. But mental health is right is how you act, think and feel. Right. And that affects every single thought process and everything that you do. And so we just want to educate our kids more around mental health so that they cannot be afraid, you know, to get the help or to shop to share and talk more about it. Mm-hmm. I was going to ask you, what's the, what's the uh, most difficult hurdle you have with trying to get get money to, to do these programs? So it's interesting. And thank you for asking that. So people look at nonprofits like, you know, like we are just these superheroes. And so many of us are, mm-hmm. but it's still a business. So we still need operational funding. A lot of the grant funding that you receive is just more programmatic. Where like the majority of the percentage of it goes t- towards programs and not towards staff. And so we just need some of these larger foundations and corporations to give foundations operational funding because we still have to run it like a business. We still have to hire people, right? We still have to log those hours for putting these programs together. So that's something that we really need. Um, The other thing I want to mention that we're excited about, you know, we're always trying to do innovative things to stay rooted in the culture. And so on May 16th at the gathering spot in Atlanta, we Love have, the gathering spot. Me too. Mm-hmm. Shout out to uh, Ryan and TK and the whole team. We're going to be doing an intimate conversation where I'll be interviewing DJ Drama mm-hmm. about his journey um, through emotional health and wellness, and he's never shared publicly about it. So we're really excited about That's that. Dope. And so we're always trying to, like, you know, again, come up with things that we can do in the culture and stay focused. Um, talk to us about the, the, the suicide Prevention Summit, are you right? Yep, it is um, Saturday, September 30th. Again, we're focusing heavily on black men and black youth. Um, It'll be a one-day summit in Atlanta. We'll have different panel discussions, live podcasting, breakout rooms, kind of similar, you know, to the Mm -hmm. summit that you do, but 
you know, totally more so around, you know, suicide prevention. We're going to have different people share their lived experiences. Um, we have a couple of people that have attempted suicide and lived, and they're going to share their journey. So yeah, I say completed because of you. You, you. you said attempted. Though. Well, attempted is different instead of committed. Oh, duh. Yep. I'm an idiot. Yeah, yeah, so you can say attempted because mm-hmm. if you attempt, it doesn't mean that you complete it. But don't right? say you kill, don't say somebody killed themselves. Yeah, I try not to say committed suicide mm-hmm. because it denotes a criminal act. So mm-hmm. we say either die by suicide or committed or completed or completed. I'm completed. sorry. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, yes. Got you. Yep. So we're really excited about that, and we're hoping that we get more partners involved. Um, and we want to just you know really be able to let people know that hope is still alive. And mm-hmm. suicide should not be an option, even you, though sometimes when you're in the thick of it and you don't you really don't think that there's another way out. Because when I was having my own suicidal ideation, I couldn't kind of see a light at the end of the tunnel. Do we do oh, you didn't want to see the light at the end of the tunnel? You know, I didn't want to die. Really? Mm-mm. I just wanted the pain to go away. Ooh, mm. I did Ooh. not know how to do that. I, I didn't want to die. Mm. Mm-mm. But that was the only way that I saw possible at that time and so you know again my sister intervened I called the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline which is now 988 which you can just dial 988 mm-hmm. and get connected to a crisis counselor but it was deep that was the toughest moment of my life um, I guess kept here you know how you hear people say oh I had thoughts and I really did have these thoughts saying kill yourself kill yourself and I had to just get out of the house it was it was tough. I'm glad you said that because we don't talk about the why enough. You know what I mean? Like, especially mm-hmm. like you'll see a lot of these kids and just people, they be on drugs, they drink a lot. And mm-hmm. we, we say, oh, you got a drug problem. And, you know, you drink too much. But what's the why? The why is they're probably trying to escape Of course. Pain. Yes. It's like it, the pain can be so deep mm-hmm. and debilitating that you almost crawled up in a ball and you don't know what to do. You know, and, and, and people are so quick to judge and, you know, God bless the trollers, because I feel like everybody deserves a little grace. But, you know, it's so bad when someone dies by suicide, even like, you know, rest in peace to Twitch. And I know his wife just did a really big interview on the Today Show and is starting to talk more about it. But when people are in that type of pain, you know, how dare you judge somebody? Mm-hmm. Because you don't know the why, to your point, and you don't know what it felt like. I mean, it was so hard for me to come out and publicly tell somebody that I really almost took those pills. But I was in so much pain that I... I'd never experienced that type of pain before. And people would say, oh, well, what do you have to be sad or depressed about? It was a culmination of all the trauma and different things that I had experienced. My best friend's suicide, which made me unpack all the layers of my father's suicide from a baby, walking away from a $500,000 a year job and seeing my peers still doing their thing and not sure what my you know, purpose on life was anymore. It's like one thing kind of like started this downward spiral, one thing after another. And so... You, know, you got to be able to give people grace when they're going through stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Even when people complete suicide, I feel like, you know, my perspective on suicide changed a couple of years ago when I had, you know, my, my good homegirl, you know, Jasmine, Jasmine Waters, Jazz Fly, she mm-hmm. committed suicide because she was so intentional about things mm-hmm. that I know everything she did was for a reason. So when she did that, I was like, maybe some people just know when they want when they want to exit. I don't know. And, you know, I won't mention her name um, because I don't talk publicly a lot about my best friend. But the day before, I talked to her 12 hours before it happened in 2014. And I think she knew. Um, She was calling to tell me goodbye. Mm. And at first, you know, I was blaming myself. I was blaming myself for from when I go back and rehash the story in my head. She knew what she was doing. And sometimes that's the thing about suicide. It's not people who... Um, die by suicide don't mm-hmm. always have a mental illness. Mm-hmm. It could be just a result of something that has happened traumatically in their life or the loss of a job or, you know, a disease that you may have a physical disease. Mm-hmm. But you can make up your mind and decide, I'm done. Yeah. I don't want anyone to ever feel like that. But that's a sobering reality to your point that, you know, sometimes, but, you know, we'll never know, right? Because we won't have a chance to really ask that person mm-hmm. why. And I think that's why it's so hard for families to get past mm-hmm. it because there's so much so much mystery around it and so much that we don't know when right. people die by suicide. But I'm here to just give people grace, you know, so that, you know, you can kind of talk through it and talk through it with your family, with mm-hmm. a therapist, so you can try to find some sort of peace with it. Do you think people research the why enough? Mm, it depends. Mm-hmm. You know, I think some family members, you know, it 
it eats at them so much that they spend their life trying to figure out the why. Mm-hmm. And then other people that I've seen, and this is just from experiences, people that are truly spiritual, they just kind of lean on their faith and just say, you know what, I- I've finally made peace with this. I'm not going to sit here and try to figure out why for the rest of my life. but Because it can literally drive you bonkers trying to figure it out. Because like in my instance, my father did not leave a note for my mother. We We still don't know to this day why my dad did it. My best friend didn't leave a note. Mm. So many people that I know don't leave notes. Mm. So on this na- National Silence to Shame Day, uh, which is today, what should people do? What, what do you suggest people to do for today? So today, National Silence to Shame Day, I want you to go to your phones, You know, go to our Instagram page. You can upload these virtual photo frames that we have because mm-hmm. everybody likes to see themselves on social media. So mm-hmm. you can upload your photo. You can also share a video about how you're silencing your shame today, right? What mental health looks like in your life. And we also would love for you to support our organization. One dollars, five dollars, ten dollars, a hundred dollars, a thousand dollars. You know, no amount is too big or small. So you can text the word silence to 707070. And every, you know, thing that you donate is going to go towards our programs as well as our organization and us being able to do the work that we do. But It's so important that we talk about these conversations and normalize them. One of the things, too, that I just want to mention is um, we're announcing a big partnership with Microsoft. We're Mm -hmm. getting an app, y'all. Oh, dog. Microsoft is building us an app, and it's going to launch in a couple weeks, and it will have content. It will have, um, you know, direct resources that you can go to because we don't do direct services, but we want to push the community to the resources. So we're excited, and we're just trying to figure out you know, with AI and VR, like what we can do in this space from a technology perspective so that people can be, you know, equipped with the resources and tools that they need around mental health. How did you end up uh, partnering with Microsoft? So uh, one of our board members, shout out to Darrell Booker. Um, he runs their philanthropy side. And so he got connected to us and they included us in their global hackathon. Mm. And it was interesting. They were um, talking to the staff about what they wanted to work on. And mental health was like the number two thing that came up. So most of the staff wanted to work on mental health. So he's like, I got this dope organization, Silence and Shame. And so that's kind of how it came about. Wow. I don't like AI in the mental health discussion. I think AI is going to be part of the reason that people's mental health continues. To I think in, in hip hop, we see what's happening with that right mm. now. But from a, a mental health perspective, I think, you know, it, it puts you in um, a dangerous territory when you think about you know, bots kind of putting out what the humans should yes. think and how we should think, act, and feel. And so we want to kind of be at the forefront of that, helping people realize, like, you need discernment, <laughs> you know, when it comes to AI. And mm-hmm. you can't just, you know, you know, utilize that in lieu of therapy. Um, it's really important. Also, you know, I want to just leave a couple nuggets, if I can, for, sure. for the listeners. So we talk about social media and we're talking about AI and different things. I have the three D's of social media that I use now, right? Is everything that I'm looking at on social media um, good for me? So the first D is discipline. Mm -hmm. You got to discipline yourself and not scroll through so many hours a day because it can also, you know, play a number on your mental psyche and send you into a downward spiral. So the first D is discipline. The second D is discernment is what I'm actually looking at good for me Mm -hmm. because all that trauma, when you see, you know, a video of somebody fighting in a school and they just replay it and replay it, our kids are getting traumatized and, and parents too, every time mm-hmm. you watch it. And then the third D um, is delightful. Is it going to feed my soul or what did Beyonce say? Break my soul, mm-hmm. right? So I, I, I try to just really make sure what I'm looking at on social media is, you know, not spending enough and not spending too much time that it's good for me and that I actually am benefiting from the content that I'm watching. Mm. Mm-hmm. Do, go, do ahead. You, okay. go ahead. No, I was gonna say, do you find it uh, easier or harder to get people involved with the the, the mission around mental health nowadays? You know, it, it's again, we know the conversation has opened up in a large mm-hmm. part. You know, thank you to you all for doing so much, and you mm-hmm. talk about it every day mm-hmm. on here as well as on social media. More and more people are talking about it. And like I have friends that work in the entertainment industry and they'll say, "Oh yeah, you know, our EAP program it sends us these emails, but I'm not really utilizing it." It's not until something happens, That's right. mm-hmm. you know, that people go, okay, actually, you know what, I, I do need help. So I think the more we're talking about it, there's still a lot of work to be done for people actually taking that next step of actually using the resources. Y'all, the resources are out there. We don't have enough for our community, but there are resources out there. You got to use them. That's why I, I am so grateful that you all and Eddie and Thea, y'all book me to come back every year mm-hmm. because we can't just talk about mental health once a year. Right. Because people are out here hurting. 
And I don't know that things are going to change in the world right now. You know, we're still at, you know, again, the racial climate is high right now in the world. Um, again, what we're experiencing with natural disasters and, and mass shootings, like sometimes y'all just waking up every morning. I'm like, mm-hmm. I woke up today. Like today's a good day because mm-hmm. I woke up today. Mm-hmm. And it's so much that we have to deal with and so much that kids to me have to deal with. And even when I was growing up in the 70s and 80s, life was kind of easy breezy. Like the fact that like six year olds have to go to school and and actually do a drill about mass shootings like that's too much it's Mm -hmm. too much on our mental psyche Mm -hmm. right now so we do have to continue to have these conversations and it's so important and last thing I want to mention is I'm starting my own podcast I'm so excited Mm -hmm. I have a personal brand now called Mebo M I for mind B-O for body so I'm going to be talking to what is it M-O Mebo okay M I for mind and then the the B-O is for body got you so around mental and physical health because it Mm -hmm. really does go hand in hand so I'm going to be talking to celebrities and I'm dedicating my first season to Hip Hop 50. We've lost a lot of celebrities, you know, from heart disease, mm-hmm. right? Diabetes. Um, I'm going to be talking to Dr. Dre. He used to be on Yo! MTV Raps about because he had to have his leg amputated. Mm-hmm. So just trying to help to continue to heal the community. I'm trying to be like you. Maybe one no, day I'm I'll... trying to be like you. And that jacket is very fresh. Thank you. Mm-hmm. you know, shout out to 50. Eric Bland. You know, um, I am the hip hop professional. So uh, Eric Bland and Run DMC That's hooked dope. me up. I got the, the 35th anniversary um, shell toes that they put and out. You buy that to silence the shame? Adidas? No. Uh-uh. I got that. sent this from Adidas. And right. when I had this, I you know, I put sounds the same on everything. Oh, you put that? <laughs> you put it on there, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Oh, That's no. very fresh. Well, we appreciate you for joining. How can people follow you and, and, and give and them the info information so they can donate? That. Yeah, so again, it's today is May 5th, so please mm-hmm. go to our Instagram page, at Silence to Shame. You can text the word silence to 707070, or you can go to our website at www.silencetoshame.com to donate. And you can follow me at Shanti Das 404, S-H-A-N-T-I-D-A-S 404. And make sure you're living that Mebo lifestyle. It's all about mind, body, wellness. And I'll be donating to Silence of Shame. And I want y'all to post, please. I hope Absolutely. you Absolutely. post on May 5th. All right. Absolutely. Well, it's The Breakfast Club. It's Shanti Das. Wake that ass up. Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.